Look, that's <laughs> enough of that. It's not helping, is it? <laughs> that's better. Now let's go over it again. You're at the opera. The, yes. Attending Her Highness the Princess. Yes, 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 it is my job. Huh? After the opera, you went back with the princess to her suite at the Dacre Hotel. <laughs> then what? I helped her get ready for bed. I a lot of jewels in the safe. I put away her clothes. And I did what I always do. Why am I here? Non ho fatto niente, niente, perché non mi credo? All right, all right. Look, you may not believe me, but I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Now, you locked her jewels in the safe, you put away her clothes, then what? I have done nothing. Why won't you believe me? Oh, please. The Six Napoleons by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Dramatised for radio by Bert Cools. With Clive Medicin as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr John Watson. And featuring Donald G as Inspector Lestrade. The Six Napoleons. Signor Holmes, I beg of you, help my daughter. Yeah, please, <laughs> Signor Venucci, it is not necessary to beg. Uh, you will take the case? I shall. Oh, grazie, grazie mille. Uh, uh, thank you. you. You must realize, Signor Holmes, I am not a wealthy man. That is not a relevant factor. Oh, I have heard of your generosity towards families such as mine, but I don't. All that interests hope. me is the case. Hmm? See, uh, the challenge. That, and to see justice done. Ah, justice, mm. yes. Uh, my son, I have a son, uh, Pietro. He did not wish me to come here. He doesn't want to see his sister released? Uh, no, no, to Pietro, the family, it is everything. To all of us. But he is young, uh, wild a little, <laughs> to all the time we fight. I tell him, this is your home now. You must make a place here. You must speak English. But he will not hear. What was his objection to your consulting me? Uh, forgive me. He believes that you and the police, you are one. The, the law, yes, la legge, le autorite. The authorities. Ah. He's mistaken. I told him. But this terrible business, it has made him so un uh, irragionevole. Uh, uncontrollable. Ah, uncontrollable, see. Yes. Uh, he feels very strongly the shame to the family. You understand? I understand. Your room adjoins the princess's suite. What? Next door. Your room is next to hers. Yes, yes, yes of course. Of I... course. There is a door between them. Of course. Of course. Who else knew that the princess had taken a sleeping powder that night? No one. No one. No one but you. Mm. Listen to me. If you did do it... I didn't. No, I didn't. How many times must I say it? If you did it, for God's sake, admit it. Confess. <laughs> if you don't... Look... It's not always going to be up to me. Things could get a lot worse for you. Worse? Worse than this? This? You wait till you see the inside of a prison. This is nothing. The police have no case. But they will not let me see her. The circumstantial evidence is very strong, uh, but they... Signor Holmes, forgive me. I do not understand. Oh, uh, <coughs> L'evidenza circostanza uh, è molto forte. Ah, mm. yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. But they have no actual proof. Then they must let her go. Not necessarily. Or at least not yet. What can we do? I must find the true criminal. You will do it. You are Sherlock Holmes. Signor, I am not infallible. Far from it. You will do it. You must. Signor Holmes, my Lucrezia is not, not strong. <laughs> what will this be doing to her? Santissima, perdonami. Ah, 
I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes, but you're wasting your time. Inspector, you have no definite proof. Well, that's for the jury to decide. Look, sir, there's a lot of pressure. Visiting royalty. Well, I don't have to explain it to you. You have to be seen to be making progress. Orders straight from the top. It's better to have an innocent prisoner than no prisoner at all. We don't know that she's innocent. Look, whether she did it or not, I know perfectly well that we've got no case. If you could have given me a better suspect, I'd have bailed her days ago. May I speak to her? Yeah, of course. Zanucci, someone to see you. Stand away from the door. Oh, God. Inspector? What's wrong? Bloody little fool. Oh, damn. Damn. Would you give me a hand to get her down, sir? Oggi! Bestia! Assassini inglesi! Pietro! Che cosa succede? Canaglie! Canaglie assassine! Pietro! Lucrezia è morta! Eh? Suicidio! Gesù Maria! Dio abbia pietà della sua anima! Basta con il tuo amico investigatore eh. inglese! Adesso facciamo le cose a modo mio, sì? Oh, sorry! In English! Now we'll do things my way! First class. Yes, indeed. Ah, Mrs. Oh. Hudson certainly has a way with steak and kidney pudding. You said as much to me on the first day we moved here. Good Lord, did I really? Oh, yes, it led to a discussion on overfeeding as a possible method of murder. Oh, yes. Yeah. Would that really be possible? Ah, relax, Lestrade. Mrs. Hudson has nothing but the warmest opinion of you. As far as I know. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy, Inspector? Ah, oh, thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Uh, yeah. mm. So, Lestrade, mm. anything uh, remarkable on hand? Oh, no, Mr. Holmes, nothing very particular. Huh? Then tell me about it. <laughs> 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 well, there's no use denying that there is something on my mind, but it's such an absurd business. Is it out of the common? Here. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, yes, is that all right? <laughs> oh, well. We have a taste for the unusual. Holmes? Oh, thank you. But this is simply trivial. Ah, just as you like. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first case was four days ago at the shop of a Mr Morse Hudson in the Kennington Road. He sells pictures, statues, that sort of thing. I'll be with you directly, sir. Uh, please look around. Hey! Hey! One plaster bust of Napoleon Bonaparte. Not worth more than a few shillings. <laughs> Senseless hooliganism. Well, that's what it was put down to at the time, Doctor. Mm. But then it happened again. Another plaster bust. Another Napoleon, too. Mm -hmm. Sounds more in your line than mine, Watson. Mm. <laughs> I agree. What? Madness? Mm. Exactly. But when our madman commits burglary, that brings it away from the doctor and on to the policeman. Burglary? Yes, that is more interesting. Bust was smashed against the garden wall. Nothing else was taken or damaged in any way. Yeah, well, this is uh, <coughs> certainly novel. I thought it would please you, but I've not got to the end yet. 
Not another one. The Napoleon in Dr Barnicott's hallway was one of a pair. The other one was in his surgery two miles away. Also smashed? Oh, yes. The poor doctor was no sooner recovered from one burglary than he arrived at work to find a window forced and bits of plaster all over his consulting room floor. It certainly is singular, not to say grotesque. Now, were Dr Barnicott's Napoleons duplicates of the one in Morse Hudson's shop? Barnicott bought his pair from Hudson. They were taken from the same mould. Hmm. What theory are you following? Well, none beyond the obvious. A madman with such a hatred of Napoleon, he has to smash any image of him he sees. Hard to believe, I know. Uh, uh, there are no limits to the possibilities of monomania. Monomania? Yes, modern French psychologists call it the Ide Fix. The sufferers are usually totally sane in every other way, but under the influence of their Ide Fix, they can be capable of almost anything. But why Napoleon in this day and age? Well, your burglar might have some hereditary family injury. That was originally caused in the Napoleonic War. No, that won't do. Uh -huh. The Strades man knew exactly which houses to break into. No amount of Ide Fix would tell him that. Well, how do you explain it? I don't attempt to. Oh, so you do think it's too trivial to bother with? Mm. I don't call anything trivial. Some of my most classic cases mm. have had the least promising beginnings. You remember the Abernethy family, Watson? <sighs> I doubt if I'll ever forget them. Dreadful business. But the whole affair would never have been suspected if I hadn't noticed how far the parcel had sunk into the butter on a hot day. Good heavens. Mm. So I, I can't afford to smile at your three broken Napoleons, Lestrade. I'd be obliged if you'd let us hear of any fresh developments. Buonasera. <laughs> Andiamo allora. Andiamo. Seguito sorella. Yes? There's coffee on the table. Yes? And a cab waiting at the door. The straight sent a telegram. Surely it could have waited. Surely it could have waited until after breakfast. Come instantly, it says. Instantly. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Horace Harker. Of the Central Press Syndicate. Good morning to you, Mr. Harker. You know my work, sir? Indeed I do. It's an extraordinary thing. All my life I've been collecting other people's news, and now this has happened, and I'm so confused and bothered that I can't put two words together. Mr. Harker, why don't you tell these gentlemen exactly what occurred? If I'd come in here as a journalist, I should have interviewed myself in two columns in every evening paper. As it is, I'm... I'm giving away a valuable copy by telling my story over and over to a string of different people. Mr. Harker, perhaps mm. if you give us the details, Mr. Holmes may be able to throw some light on what happened. That would give you a valuable exclusive. You're right, sir. You're quite right. Mm. Well, of course, you understand these things. Yes. Oh, it's a queer business, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I don't doubt it. Something unsettling on the front doorstep, I believe. Well, yes, but how do you know that? It's been swelled down not more than a few hours ago. And the crowd outside would hardly have gathered for a simple burglary. <laughs> no, nothing less than attempted murder will hold the London messenger boy in. Nothing attempted about it, I'm afraid. It's murder? Then your agitation is perfectly normal, Mr Harper. You should be sitting down. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Doctor. That's better. Good. <sighs> when did you find the body in? Um, uh, just after three o'clock this morning. I was writing in my den at the top of the house... I thought I heard a noise from down here. I listened, but there wasn't anything else. So I supposed it must have been outside. I... And then? A sound that would ring in my ears as long as I live. Yes. Did you investigate? With the poker in my hand, sir. 
And I found the poor fellow on my top step. There was a great gash in his throat. Did you see anyone else, Mr. Harker? No, Doctor. Mr. Harker fainted. Mm, entirely understandable. And Constable Upton found him and raised the alarm. Mr. Harker, the noise that first alerted you, it did come from inside the house, didn't it? It did, sir. I found a window open. Someone had been inside this room. Was anything damaged or taken? Something was taken, Doctor, but it passes my understanding. All that had gone was a plaster bust. A plaster bust of Napoleon Bonaparte. Wonderful. But I thought you were guilty of exaggeration, Doctor. Mr. Holmes, that is wonderful. A bust which you purchased from Mr. Morse Hudson of the Kennington Road. Oh, I'm afraid you're quite wrong. I bought it from Harding Brothers' department store in Kensington. What a pity. Well? Uh, who found it, Lestrade? The regular beat constable. I haven't got enough men to mount searches for missing statues, Mr. Holmes. The chief constable would have a fit. Yes, no doubt. Anything, Holmes? Well, we've a long way to go yet. From the size of those pieces, it wasn't particularly large. About the same as the others. Hardly worth stealing. But it wasn't stolen. Or at least it wasn't taken very far. Yeah, it's not more than a hundred yards. Presumably the thief's idea was simply to smash it without being hurt. Exactly. Now, why else come to an empty house? But why this one? There's another one much closer to Mr. Harker's. We passed it on the way here. Watson. Well... I can't see it. Ah! This empty house is by a street lamp. He wanted to see what he was doing. Excellent. Well, it's a fact, all right. But what are we to do with it? Remember it. File it away. Yeah, we may come across something later that bears on it. Just at the moment, I'm rather more concerned about the murder. Have you identified the dead man? Uh, may I? Be my guest. He won't mind. Uh, <clears throat> this fellow's a foreigner. Uh, uh, what do you think, Italian? It's very likely. Uh, what was he wearing, Lestrade? Oh, he was rather poorly dressed. Mm. He's not a labourer. Look at his hands. Was there nothing on him to identify him? Nothing. Hmm. What does it mean? Is he the thief? Mm. Surely he wouldn't have gone back to the house after he smashed the statue. It's more likely that he surprised the thief and challenged him. Which means our burglar is also a murderer. Yeah, it's a murderer who delayed his getaway long enough to examine the bust. Doesn't that tell you something about the motive behind all this, Lestrade? These damn busts, I tell you, they're nothing but a blind alley. Yes, well, I believe I've finished here now. What was he carrying? Well, it's all here. An apple, some string, shilling map of London and a photograph. A sorry enough collection. Mm, no weapon. Uh, there was a knife lying in the blood beside him. His or the murderer's? We don't know. Uh, uh, you're right. Sorry collection. What steps will you take now, Inspector? Well, the most practical way of getting at it is to identify the dead man. Once we've done that, we have a good start in learning who might want to kill him. Don't you think so? It's not the way I'd approach it. Uh, what would you do, then? Oh, well, you mustn't let me influence you. You go on your line and I'll go on mine. We can compare notes afterwards. Very good. This is where the real detective work starts, isn't it? Hard slog and routine. Not like your adventure stories, Doctor. Hmm. Hard slog and routine. It could be weeks before either of us turns up something useful. Call round at six o'clock tonight. Why have we come back here? Shouldn't we be getting on with things? Really, Doctor... Where's your sympathy for a fellow man of letters? Holmes, he's a journalist. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I made him a promise, or rather you did, on my behalf. Ah. Mm. Taking no chances. Can you blame him? But it's not likely to happen again. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes, doctor, uh, uh, won't you come in? Uh, thank you, no, Mr. Harker. We're in something of a hurry. Uh, can I give you any more information? No, but I can give you some. I've quite made up my mind about this case. My dear sir. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You may tell your readers that Sherlock Holmes is convinced that a dangerous homicidal maniac with Napoleonic delusions broke into your house last night. But that's wonderful. Just what I need for my article. Uh, gentlemen, I don't mean to be rude, but the deadline for the evening edition... Of course, of course. Good day to you, Mr. Harker. Uh, good day, gentlemen. And thank you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Holmes, you don't seriously believe that. Don't I? 
Hmm. Well, perhaps I don't. Now, look at the height of that window. I beg your pardon? The window where our friend got in last night. Uh, ah, yes, yes, I see what you mean. Pretty inaccessible. So, he was a very agile sort. Like a monkey, despite Lestrade's over-enthusiastic washing away of the blood. He could hardly have left it there. There are still several interesting traces. He was a short man, comparatively long in the leg and rather slight. Ah, the man in the mortuary doesn't fit that at all, so I was right. He isn't our burglar. No, he isn't. But he was extremely interested in him. How do you know that? Because he was carrying his photograph. What's Lestrade going to think when he finds out you took that? I'll give it back to him tonight. Stealing evidence is a serious offence. Not as serious as murder. You thought that Morse Hudson was the common factor in all this, didn't you? Yes, I did. But Mr. Harker bought his Napoleon from somewhere else. Harding Brothers Department Store. There must be a link. We'll speak to the manager. I'm sorry, sir. Both Mr. Hardings will be absent until late this afternoon. Damn. I'm very sorry, sir. I'd like to examine your purchasing records. That is confidential information, sir. This is a very serious business, Mr. Um... Stock, sir. I'm very sorry, but there's nothing I can do. You must come back later. Now, if you'll excuse me. Of course. Gentlemen. Damn, Holmes. Come on! What we pay rates and taxes for, I don't know, when any ruffian can come in and break one's goods. Mr. Hudson. It's uh... disgraceful, sir. A plot. That's what I call it. No one but an anarchist would go about breaking statues. Mr. Hudson. The red Republicans, that's what they are. Mr. Hudson. Oh. Who did you get the statues from? Who did I get them from? Mm. You want to know who I got them from? Yes, sir. Well, they were from uh, Gelder and Company, Church Street, Stepney. They're a well-known supplier in the trade, have been for over 20 and years. how many did you have? How many? Uh, three, sir. Three. Two for Dr. Barnicott, and the third one smashed in broad daylight on my own counter. Anarchist, sir. Anarchist. Would you please look at this... What about it, sir? Do you know him, Mr. Hudson? Do I know him? No, I don't. Yes, I do, though. Yeah, his name's Beppo. I never did know his surname. He did some odd jobs for me a week ago. Then he disappeared. No idea where he went. So, we know our murderer's name, at least. Or part of it. And we have him as a common factor, both here and in Kensington. Well, that's mm. worth something, but most important. We have the manufacturer of the busts. <laughs> On to Stepney. <laughs> Look at this place. A city. Within a city. This isn't a city. It's a disgrace. No one should have to live in conditions like this. Let's find this factory. Yes, Herr Holmes, I remember the item well. A copy in plaster of the famous head of the Emperor by Devine. The original is in marble, of course. How many copies did you make, Herr Gelder? Oh, that is impossible to say. Hundreds. Hundreds? It used to be a most popular item. But one can only sell so many. We make it no more. We're particularly interested in a batch you sold to Mr. Morse Hudson of Kensington. I will see what I can find. Uh, hmm. Ah. Ah. Yes, here they are. June the 3rd of last year. Ah. Uh, and they were the final six. Six, Herr Gelder? Hudson bought only three. No, oh, impossible. Wait. Ah. Uh, oh, that's I am here. Herr Holmes, you are quite correct. A batch of six, as I said, but only three went to Herr Hudson. The other three were made to special order for the Brothers Harding. Well, thank you, Herr Kelder. You've been most helpful. Gentlemen, you are welcome. Oh. Alberto, be careful with those boxes. Oh, these Italians, they are impossible. Why do you employ so many? One must take what one can get. And for the real work, they can be superb. Mm. Do you recognize this man? Oh. oh, the rascal, yes, indeed, I know him very well. 
This has always been a respectable establishment here, Holmes. And the only time we have ever had the police in here was over this fellow. He knifed another Italian here in my yard. Was the man killed? No, Doctor. God say dank. He lived. And this Beppo got off with a 12 months. When was this? Just over a year ago. 13 months, perhaps. And where did the police catch up with him? Here, in my works. This villain led them a chase all through the building, li like a monkey he was. Was he indeed? Oh, thank you, Herr Gelder. If you are looking for him, he has a cousin who works here still. I dare say he could uh, No, you. no, not a word to the cousin, I beg you. They were. It's extremely important. This man must not be given the least suspicion. Kensington outrage, murder by a madman. Hmm. So, Mr. Horace Harker got his account into print after all. Yes, two columns of highly sensational and flowery prose. You like it. More coffee. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the well-known consulting expert, has come to the conclusion that the grotesque series of incidents which have ended in so tragic a fashion arose from lunacy rather than deliberate crime. No other explanation can cover the facts. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's masterly. Yeah. <laughs> On your part, I mean. Oh. That will be picked up by every other newspaper. Our man won't have the least idea that you're onto him. The press is a most valuable institution, if you know how to use it. Drink up. Here you are, gentlemen. Three busts of Napoleon Bonaparte at six shillings each, supplied by Gelder and Company Stepney. Third of June last year. I'm afraid they're all sold now. Do you know who the buyers were, Mr Harding? I can very easily tell you. I pride myself on keeping meticulous records, Mr Holmes. As do you, I dare say. <laughs> Here we are, June and July. Now... Oh, wait, Mr Harding. Mr Holmes? May I see the index finger of your right hand? <laughs> My dear sir. It is of some importance. Oh, very well. Yes. As I thought. Ah, thank you. Now, the names and addresses, if it be so kind. What a pity he didn't recognise the man in the photograph. Well, I'm afraid real life seldom as neatly ordered as Mr Harding's record books. <laughs> well, but there are certain to be several Italians on the staff, or cleaners and so forth, that ideally place to take a look at the ledger. And recently, too. Which is why there was no dust on its top edge to be transferred to Mr Harding's finger. Am I right? Entirely. Well done. I can see that the Italian thread runs right through this case, but... But I still don't understand where the Napoleon busts fit in. The material they're made of is far more important than their subject. Please, none of your cryptic clues. I think I'd prefer being told nothing at all. Ah, what is it? The doormat. A left boot mark with an inward twist. Hmm. Unmistakable. Lestrade, my dear fellow. Mm. Haven't kept you waiting. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, mm. uh, good evening, Doctor. Inspector. Well... Any luck, Mr. Holmes? Oh, I've had a very busy day. Not entirely a wasted one. I can now trace each of the busts from the beginning. The busts? Well, you have your own methods, and it's not for me to say a word against them. But I think I've done a better day's work than you. I've identified the dead man. You don't say. Well done, Inspector. And found a cause for the crime. Splendid. There's an officer at the yard who makes a speciality of Saffron Hill and the Italian Quarter. Inspector Barnes. He knew our victim as soon as he caught sight of him. His name is Pietro Venucci from... Pietro Venucci, of course. ...from Naples. He's believed to be connected with the Mafia, which, as you may know, is a secret political society which enforces its decrees by murder. Yes, I had heard something of that sort. Yeah. So, you see, the affair begins to clear up. The man in the photograph, which I shall be obliged if you return, Mr Holmes... Oh, my apologies, Lestrade. Careless of me. Thank you. Now, as I was saying... Mm. Excuse me one moment, would you? Uh, yes. This fellow is probably an Italian too. Another member of the Mafia, like as not. He's broken the rules in some fashion, and friend Pietro is set on his track. He dogs him, waits for him outside the house, and in the scuffle receives his own death wound. How's that? Excellent, Inspector. I've no doubt you've got it. Mm, but I didn't quite follow your explanation of the uh, destruction of the busts. The busts? Mm. Ah, that's nothing. Petty larceny, six months at most. It's the murder that I'm investigating. In the next day? Simple. I'll go down to the Italian quarter, find the man in the photograph and arrest him. Will you come with me? Uh, I think not. Well, just as you like. Uh, but if you'll come with us tonight, 
I fancy we'll be able to help you lay him by the heels. You know where he is? Well, I can't say for certain, but I do have great hopes. We'll be going to the Italian quarter. No, to Chiswick. Chiswick? Mrs Hudson, an express messenger, if you please. Hmm. Inspector? Inspector? What the devil? Oh. oh, it's you, Doctor. Time, is it? Yes. Very nearly. I must say, when he said tonight, I didn't think he meant of this sort of hour. Oh. Why do we do it? Sometimes I wonder. Did you get any sleep at all? Precious little. No offence to your sofa. Doctor. Holmes's orders. Splendid. They've all retired for the night. Oh, very unusual of them. I hope you know what you're doing, Mr. Holmes. I take it this is Lebanon Villas. Ah, bravo, Watson. Yes, I, I thought it more likely than Lower Grove Road, Reading. Well, I'm glad mm. you two know what all this is about, because I'm damned if I do. Well, it's simple enough, Lestrade. We're going to catch your criminal in the act, if the odds fall in our direction. And how long are we going to have to wait? Well, it may well be some time. Wonderful. I don't suppose we can smoke, can we? Better not to. Mm. Well, at least it's not raining. What was that? What? To your left, there. Is that him? Quiet, quiet. Wait, wait. Look at him. He really is like a monkey. Yes, he's inside. Let's go closer. Yes, near enough, I think. Watson. Ready. Excellent. There he is. He's carrying something. Of course he is. Now? Not yet. Let him get away from the house. Now. Maledizione! Look out for the knife! No, you don't! Now! I strongly advise you not to move. Are you all right, Mr. Holmes? Yes, I believe so. Good. Ah. Come here, you! I did exactly as you told me, Mr. Holmes. You did it superbly, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Lights burning until two. Window open a crack. The good emperor in the front room. Everything. I hope there wasn't too much damage, Mr. Brown. Oh, none at all, Doctor. None at all. Excellent. Though I feel bound to say that a little disruption would have been a price well worth the paying. My goodness, such excitement. <laughs> oh, pity about your bust, though. Oh, I'm sure he is proud to have been of service. <laughs> Canalia. That's quite enough of that kind of talk. Sit back there. Oh, get back! Hmm. Well, he is a nasty piece of work, isn't he? He'll sing a different tune once we've got him back at the yard. Barnes knows all these gentry. He'll put a name to him, and you'll find that my theory of the mafia. Le non sa niente della mafia. Ah, you see? My theory will work out all right. Don't you think so, Mr. Holmes? As a matter of fact, Lestrade, I do. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm exceedingly obliged to you for the way you laid hands on him. As neat a job as ever I've seen. Inspector. So, that's another one over and done with. I don't think so. No? <laughs> Why don't you call round at Baker Street again tomorrow? There are one or two details still to be finished off. Are you sure? Quite sure. Come for dinner. Find it. 
Are you going to tell me what it is? Uh, soon. <laughs> Silly of me to ask. <laughs> Where have you been most of today, anyway? Uh, paying my respects to an old client. Ah, the good inspector. Uh, Watson, mm. I prefer to say nothing until after dinner. Of course, if that's what you want. Thank you for your patience. Go on. Watson, this case goes much deeper than Lestrade ever suspected. There's been great suffering caused. We are about to make some small restitution, you and I. So you see, gentlemen, I was quite right. This Peppo character is well known in the Italian community as a ne'er-do-well. <laughs> and I've no doubt he ran foul of one or other of the ruling families. And they set out to hunt him down. And before you ask me, Mr Holmes... Hmm? Uh, sorry, forgive me, Lestrade. You say? Before you ask me, he refuses to say one word about those blessed bus. He must have had a reason, though, surely, Inspector. Some kind of grudge against Geldron Company, if you ask me. Uh, could well be. Hmm. If you ask me. Ah, my visitor, I think. <clears throat> That's all right, Mrs. Hudson. The gentleman's expected. Mr. Sandiford of Reading, I presume. Indeed, sir. Um, uh, have I the honour of uh, uh, addressing Mr. Sherlock Holmes? You have. Well, I trust your journey wasn't too arduous. Oh, yes, I, I fear I am a little late. The, uh, the trains were um, awkward. Oh, dear. Where'd you come in? Oh, thank you. Oh, gentlemen. Mm. Now, Mr. Sandford, mm. you have the item. Ah, thank you again, Mr. Sandford. I trust that your journey back to Reading will be less awkward. Mr. Holmes, that document... The transferal of ownership? Oh, quite. Mm. Is that normal in matters such as this? Oh, yes. Absolutely normal, I assure you. Good evening. Gentlemen. My apologies for keeping you waiting. Ah. Don't mention it. What's one more bust of Napoleon between friends? Especially one you just paid ten pounds for. Indulge him, Inspector. Let him do this in his own way. Do we have any choice in the matter? Gentlemen, observe. First, I cover the table. Then His Imperial Majesty, the last of his line, the only survivor of the Batch of Six, goes in the centre... so. It's a plain enough likeness for all this fuss to be made over it. You must admit it's interesting to see one in one piece for a change. Oh. oh, for the love of heaven. Let me introduce you to one of the most famous objects in the world. The Black Pearl of the Borgias. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> this is truly amazing. Doctor. The Black Pearl of the Borgias. It disappeared over a year ago from the bedroom of the Princess of Colonna at the Dacre Hotel. Uh, the press cuttings are here, if you're interested. I was consulted on the case. I didn't know that. Uh, you were away at the time, and I couldn't throw any light on it. The papers had a field day with the actual crime, but I, I don't remember anything about a solution. It was hushed up. The Princess's maid was suspected, but it never came to trial. She went and... My God. Her, name, Her was... name was Lucrezia Venucci. Venucci? The sister of the murdered man who proved an easy recruit to the Mafia in his thirst for vengeance against the true criminal. Especially since the Mafia were able to tell him exactly who that was. Beppo. Beppo stole the pearl. Uh, and was still carrying it the first time that the Venucci boy caught up with him. Ah, the knifing incident at Gilda's factory. Yes, Venucci failed to kill Beppo, but he did put pay to his plans. The police were there in minutes, and Beppo couldn't afford to be caught with a pearl on him. So, as they chased him through the factory, he got rid of it, into the base of one of the six Napoleons on the drying rack. So all this nonsense was him looking for the right one? Hmm? Good grief. It's amazing he could trace them after a year in jail. Well, he had the advantage of members of his own community passing him information. It was his bad fortune that the pearl was in the only bust he never actually laid his hands on. His bad fortune? And ah, good. Good fortune a year too late. 
The shame she brought to her family was more than Lucrezia Venucci could bear. She hanged herself in her cell. Oh, God. Pietro Venucci's one desire was to avenge the death of his sister. The passage of a year did nothing to diminish it. He must have been dogging Beppo since his release, till he finally caught up with him on Mr. Horace Harker's front steps. Where his thirst for vengeance proved to be stronger than his skill with the knife. One more life uselessly thrown away, a family destroyed because of my failure to solve a straightforward burglary. Well, I've seen you handle a good many cases, Mr. Holmes, but I don't know that I ever knew a more workmanlike one than that. We're not jealous of you at Scotland Yard. No, sir. We're proud of you. And if you come down tomorrow, there's not a man, from the oldest inspector to the youngest constable, who wouldn't be glad to shake you by the hand. Thank you, Lestrade. Thank you. Put the pearl in the safe, Watson. Holmes. And get out the papers of the Conk Singleton forgery case, would you? Of course. In The Six Napoleons, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Madison and Dr. Watson by Michael Williams, with Donald G. as Inspector Lestrade. Lucrezia was played by Federe Holmes, Venucci, Alberto and Harding by John Church, Brown and Gelder by David Holt, Pietro and Stock by Matthew Morgan, Beppo by James Telfer, Hudson and Sanderford by John Fleming, Harker by Peter Penry Jones, and The Inspector by Eric Allen. The violinist was Leonard Friedman. The Six Napoleons was dramatised for radio by Bert Cools and directed by Patrick Rayner. <laughs>